Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to the third episode of the 3 months challenge series. New account, 3 months, no money. Let's see how big our kingdom can get and what happened during our third week of gameplay. I can't believe this has been going on for 3 weeks already. Time flies when you're having fun I guess. Here is a recap of rewards we got from last set of challenges and events, and where we left our kingdom last week. We're doing good so far, let's see how we can keep momentum. But first thing first, Percival up to 300. That's one less thing to do. Alright, so what did the game gave us to work with for this new set? First of all, a passive increase alliance kingdom power challenge. Not too much to say about this one, we will take second place behind Orcus, as expected, but rewards for members at second place are still pretty good with 3 Excaliburs and 16 manuscript caches. We also had a tourney score challenge, and this one was a little more interesting. Needless to say, I used all my daily and additional attempts every day. I also sent my top 2 heroes on a 42 heroes player who built one very strong Brunhilde but left the rest at poor quality level. I of course used dueling tokens for that to rack up a lot of points. On top of that, Scarlet, Ulrich, Marcelo, Bertrand, Sir Bevois and Rollo were all strong enough to clear a 29 heroes low kingdom power player, so I again dove into my dueling token stash and spent time on the battlefield. Pretty much all my other heroes were useless so I didn't bother with them. I want to add that ever since the beginning I'm clearing all kingdom campaign missions every day, so I had a comfortable amount of dueling tokens saved. Lastly, if you're interested with tourney stuff, I can only recommend you to watch my tourney compendium series that explains pretty much all you need to know about it. In the end, I will barely secure 5th place and will return home with 4 more Excaliburs and 6 manuscript caches, but we will get back to that later. To keep us busy during tourney attempts cooldowns, the game gave us a much anticipated treasure hunt event. As stated last week, I was really looking forward to this event as I saved some gems for it. On day 15, I was finally able to spend them all to buy the last two spots of my training grounds. This was enough to secure the shovels I needed to complete the grid, earning two famed hero tokens, one grail, one Excalibur and three famed hero fragments. I had enough Excaliburs to summon one legendary table hero, and I did not waste a second to do so. Yes, I chose Roland first. I know that a lot of people will tell you to go with Arthur, and they have a point. Let me explain why I ended up summoning Roland. Basically what you look for when pondering over legendary heroes are their military and provision quality skills, because this is what you'll be building up to take advantage of their paragon bonus. Arthur has a 5 stars military skill, Roland has a 6 stars. For provision, they both have a 4 stars skill. If you stop there, then Roland wins because of his military 6 stars. However, Arthur has a skin available on the feast shop for 25k points that adds a 5 stars provision skill. So it becomes a 5-5 versus a 6-4. It's pretty close, almost an even battle, but I do value military over provision, hence my choice. On top of that, I didn't have enough feast points to buy the skin right away, and points can be spent somewhere else instead, at least for now. At the end of the day I don't think it matters much, because Arthur will be the second legendary hero that I will summon right after enhancing Roland to bronze. Back to treasure hunt. On second day, limited time quests gave me enough shovels to clear the grid again. However, on third and fourth days I couldn't get anything. Still a decent boost towards building Percival and legendary heroes. And finally, an archers and accolades event was up during this first set. In addition to limited time quests rewards I gambled the little gems I had left on this and got surprisingly good returns for my trouble. 3 Grails, 1 Excalibur, 1 Elise token and 1 Jean token for 2200 gems, that's pretty good. I also want to thanks the Queen for sending me a significant amount of medals at the end of this event, allowing me to claim an extra famed hero fragment. Labyrinth and Queen Sansa are veteran players from server 256 and husband and wife in real life. It's a great pleasure battling against them on server 1337, 
and I hope they're having fun starting from scratch again. Aside from leveling my heroes as soon as I had money, I also got enough tokens from the Alliance shop to enhance Merlin to silver. It gave my Merlin another 125k bonus to each attribute. I thought it would give a 250k bonus but it turns out I read the wiki page wrong, read it as cumulative. Here for Merlin bronzing him gave 125k and another 125k for silver, up to a total of 250k. Clearing treasure grids put my grails total to 12, so I had the opportunity to either enhance my Percival to silver or to put him at paragon level 2. I know that I said I would work on his paragons, but I had a moment of weakness and I enhanced him instead. It's a trap. Again, I expected a 300k bonus boost to each attribute, but it turned out to be a 150k boost instead. Now that I know how to read the chart, I'll make better choices next time. Enhancing instead of raising one paragon is not that bad, but I should have stuck to the original plan. I managed to put my kingdom level up to 11 on day 16, with pretty lackluster rewards for the effort. Sir Geoffroy is not a good hero, lacking a maiden, and 4 quality manuscripts is not that much, even though you can't spite on them. At least I'll get better XP and councils, that's probably the best thing I got out of it. In the end, results from set 1 of the week were pretty good. Here is the recap from it. Before talking about the second set of challenges and events, let's take a look at the features we got during the week. First of all, the full Castle Siege shop unlocked on day 19, allowing us to buy Heroic Maidens tokens. That's good news because I will be able to buy Brunhilde tokens from now on, greatly speeding up the process of unlocking her. Another thing that will help towards that goal is Kingdom Campaign Expeditions being available on day 19 as well. This is the start of a long journey towards chapter 353 to 6, let's stop for a minute to explain how things will go from now on. You can complete 10 missions a day. Starting at 6 and every 12 missions after that, we will collect a chest with 100 gems. Starting at 12 and every 24 missions after that, we will get a 5k random attributes tome. And finally, starting at 24 and every 24 after that, we will get an heroic maiden token. So every 4 chapters, we will be able to collect a Brunhilde token, up to 20. After that, it switches to 20 Elise tokens, then 20 Jean tokens, then 20 Diana tokens, and finally Milan tokens until you reach the end at chapter 353. This basically means 5 heroic maiden tokens every 12 days. This is fantastic for a free to play account, but you have to be careful because GOAT put a big trap on the way. To clear chapter 90, you will need 4 all around heroes, and to clear chapter 95, you will need 5 of them. If you do your 10 missions a day, you will get to chapter 90 in 54 days, and to chapter 95 in 57 days. You have a little less than 2 months when it starts to get 5 all around heroes. That's why I have to fight that roadblock as soon as possible. I have Sir Oliver and Merlin already, I need 3 more all around heroes. Brunhilde will be the 3rd one, and Kawala from the Alliance shop the 4th one. I don't really want Kawala on the team but I don't really have a choice here if I want to progress on these missions. Players who spend money get a free one with William the Conqueror, but we won't have that luxury, we will have to unlock another fifth one. Choices are scarce, and I feel that Adira is probably the easiest one to get for me. So as soon as I'll see Adira tokens available in any event, this will be top priority. The countdown has started, we will see how it goes. Supreme card went live on day 19, and I immediately used my 3 days trial to get some gems and ease the pain of collecting and training a little bit. And finally, the theater opened during the week. As much as I'm not a big fan of watching ads, as a free player the rewards are just too good to pass on them. 20 ads is a lot though, so I usually launch them when I'm having breakfast, getting a cup of coffee or anything that prevents me from sitting and watching ads for 10 minutes. You can also spread your pain and watch them by batches of 4 or 5 during the day. Keep your free tickets for a day when you're really not in the mood for ads. I prioritize famed hero fragments and manuscript pages, but in the end you should get everything worth a little during your daily session. As for the second set of challenges, we were granted two passive ones, a loose soldier's challenge where I'll end up in 7th place, but rewards won't be so great. 8 manuscript caches and some other items but nothing relevant. And an increased charm challenge, where I will score top 20 rewards with 2 grails and 8 manuscript caches. Not too many events either, though it was a real pleasure to play Love Memories again. I like it a lot, 
and my loyal spreadsheet from a year ago was resurrected for the occasion. I managed to complete 5 grids and 60 links. Even though they didn't yield any of the best possible reward, which was a Diana token, I still got a bunch of tribute chests and manuscript caches. Along with 16 useless Dagama fragments. These will stay in my bags forever I guess. During this set, Scarlet was enhanced to silver, and roll into bronze. Not much else relevant to say as we jump straight into the weekly recap. I ended up the week halfway through Kingdom level 11, with 23.1 million Kingdom power. This puts me in 6th place on server rankings. We are on main quest 1546, and it won't take me much more to being blocked by my number of children. As such, I will probably be slowed down in the next couple of days. I'm starting to accumulate various hero tokens, so I'll add my inventory to the slide for everyone to keep track. I've worked towards Brunhilda and Kawala so far, but events gave me a couple of extra tokens that will stay in my bags for now. As far as the lineup goes, we now have 29 heroes with Percival on top at level 350 with over 350 quality. Roland is already at second place and is my lone level 300 hero. I have put everybody else to level 200 and up, but I'm starting to worry about investiture material already, so I'm being extra cautious about it. Correct way to go would probably be to green a couple of more heroes, but it bothers me to put baseline heroes at green this early. I'm waiting for better heroes to join the team to do that, so hopefully next week we will unlock good ones. In the next episode, the new server stuff will end and we all will be able to compete on regular events and challenges with all older servers. And right away we have a Battlefield of Glory event with Adira tokens to grab, and an Alliance Deathmatch event. It's time to buckle your seatbelt, because things are about to go wild. Anyway, that's all for this week. I hope you had a great time, and don't forget to come back next week for some crazy curling action. Take care and as usual, thank you for watching. Bye bye.